Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 23rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. But remember, I'll be traveling uh, tomorrow, so there will be no Friday edition of this podcast. PowerShell, everybody's favorite tool, and Xavier ran into an interesting piece of malware written in PowerShell that is going after crypto coins. Crypto coins, even though uh, their value has declined quite a bit, uh, well, if you can get them for free, they're still worth something. So attackers are still going after them. This particular PowerShell script also has a very low virus total score. Only one out of the 53 engines virus total uses did detect the script as malicious. The particular script is first of all enumerating a crypto coin related browser extensions and then exfiltrating them to the attacker together with any crypto coin looking information that it finds in the clipboard. So knowing what extensions are running, meaning what exchanges and such the user is probably participating in, and then knowing any crypto coin addresses and possibly usernames and passwords being copy pasted, the attacker may be able to get access to the account of the victim here. Now, talking about PowerShell, of course, lots of malware these days is written in PowerShell, but PowerShell is also an important defensive tool and typically cannot easily and probably shouldn't just be disabled. In order to help you better secure a PowerShell, we now have a new cybersecurity information sheet, as they call it, that was created by the NSA, the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, as well as the Government Communication Security Bureau in New Zealand and the National Cybersecurity Center in the UK. So three countries, four agencies came together and created a guide helping you to secure PowerShell. The guide includes tips how to use PowerShell securely, for example, how to set up a secure remote connections uh, with PowerShells, things like PowerShell remoting and uh, TLS uh, use, but they're also looking at how to detect malicious PowerShell use. The guide is pretty brief for what it does. It's about uh, five pages uh, without uh, the references, but uh, I think sort of has some real good highlights here. So uh, not a long read, certainly, and uh, something that anybody using and deploying PowerShell should uh, probably have read to see that uh, you sort of cover uh, the basics here. Also, a nice table uh, which uh, PowerShell functions are available based on the version of PowerShell and the version of Windows that you are running. And MageCard, the group that has made a name for itself by injecting malicious JavaScript into uh, name brand sites like British Airways a few years back, well, uh, they're still around and Malwarebytes now published an update on what this group is up to. Malwarebytes has uh, details on how to recognize uh, these latest attacks, some of uh, the uh, domains, for example, being used in these attacks. They try to look a little bit like sort of uh, metrics collections or user tracking tools. And of course, if you go to many modern websites, uh, they often have multiple pieces of JavaScript being included from sort of commercial uh, user tracking services that uh, they employ and can be difficult for a defender to figure out which ones are legit and which ones are injected by someone like MageGuard. Nothing here about uh, where they actually breached one of these statistics uh, providers as they have done in some of these more high-profile uh, attacks. So definitely worth reading if you are defending web applications. And in other news, uh, there's a nice article by Checkpoint about a Chinese actor who is apparently going after script kiddies by offering them uh, tools that then turn out to be malware in itself. Not necessarily a new approach, but uh, not really seen often sort of in a more organized fashion like this. It looks like a day or so ago, 
air raid sirens in Israel went off for about 15 minutes uh, as the result of uh, an attack against the uh, public uh, notification system in Israel. They were taken down pretty quickly, but still this sort of one of those uh, typical, maybe more nuisance attacks, but of course in a country like Israel where you do have a lot of air raids and such, uh, they probably can cause quite a bit of uh, confusion. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening, and remember, next podcast on Monday. So talk to you again on Monday.